Harry Lambert is a staff writer and editor at The New Statesman, and he thinks a ceasefire in Gaza is an impossible ask. I think it's true that a ceasefire only does one thing. It freezes the current conflict, as Keir Starmer says yesterday. And so whether in Ukraine or in Israel, if you're calling for a ceasefire, you're saying you're content with where things are right now. I don't think that should be the case in Ukraine. It means a fifth of the country would be under Rus- Russian subjugation. And I think it's untenable to expect the Israelis not to try and remove Hamas from the Gaza Strip. The way they're going about it is um, not something that I think you can easily condone. Uh, There's clearly a tragedy, a humanitarian one, happening here. But it's impossible to call for a ceasefire. You can't have a ceasefire because that freezes things in place. Harry, do you know who else made that argument? It was Hamas in the 1990s when the PLO agreed to put down their arms. Right? So they said, we're going to put down our arms and start negotiating. Hamas said, well, if you put your arms down now, um, that's going to freeze things in place. We need to keep fighting. And the reference to Ukraine just makes the argument even more perfect. So he says, Ukraine couldn't possibly agree to put down arms when Russia occupies a fifth of their land. Well, does Harry know how much of Palestine is occupied by the Israelis? 100%. 100%. Presumably then, he thinks it would be mad, it would be crazy to ask them to renounce violence when, when 100% of their land is being subjugated, occupied by a foreign power. I think this new statesman journalist has just accidentally made Hamas's case for them. Um, not saying I agree, I think he was making a very bad argument actually. Um, but it does seem somewhat bizarre, doesn't it? He's talking about a people who are occupied and therefore they must keep fighting. Um, and he's applying that to the Ukrainians, but not the Palestinians. Yes, yeah, far be it for you, Michael, to agree with uh, a Hamas argument. Um, I should say part of the structure we live in in Britain having these conversations is that people can indeed go on TV and uh, celebrate the IDF as they bomb hospitals and refugee camps. And we are frequently treated to commentators on our TV screens celebrating and applauding that Israeli violence. But of course, if you were to, and I'm not doing it, if you were to um, celebrate and promote Hamas, uh, that is illegal um, in this land of free speech that would be support for a prescribed terrorist organization. This new statesman journalist is is parroting exactly what Keir Starmer said yesterday. And it did genuinely shock me. I thought I was past shock uh, when it came to people like Keir Starmer um, and their colonial double standards. But it did genuinely shock me to hear the argument that we should oppose a ceasefire because that would leave Hamas's military capacities um, intact. It was a very revealing thing to say. Uh, Here's what's wrong with it. First, a ceasefire would, of course, leave both sides with their military capacities intact. So the argument makes very clear that in this brutal situation, uh, the outsider's Western British position is not just that it's a horrible situation, we hope the fighting stops, but to side with Israel, to worry not at all about Israel's military capacities being left undamaged, but to worry only about Palestinian military capacities being left undamaged, even though Israel's military capacities have done infinitely more harm, killed infinitely more people um, than have Palestinian military capacities. So the worry only about Hamas is very terrible. But secondly, secondly, to say we can't have a ceasefire because Israel must destroy Hamas when Hamas operates through a network of underground tunnels, when that destruction means the blanket destruction of much life in Gaza, is to believe that there can be a military solution to an evidently political problem that a population of 2.2 million people is penned into a small area because most of them are refugees from other parts of Palestine. Those people are placed under a colonial siege where every bit of food and water they get is at the behest of their colonizer who can shut it down at will. So here we have politicians abroad saying, we don't have any immediate questions about any of that. We think first Israel needs to try to crush, impossibly to crush, the guerrilla operation of the resistance coming out of Gaza. And then maybe we can have a conversation about other things only after Israel's completely destroyed the capacity of Palestinians to resist after decades in which Israel has failed to destroy the capacity of Palestinians to resist, just like every other colonizer has, because if you wipe out an organization, another one emerges in its place because people refuse. This is something about the human spirit. People refuse to live forever on their knees. People insist on living, standing up and breathing and living free. So the position that says we oppose a ceasefire now, that says let's have a humanitarian pause so for a week we'll give people food and then we'll start bombing them again and depriving them of food and water again. That position is so deeply telling because it treats dispossessed and colonized people as objects to be managed and destroyed, not as people who have rights to the kind of freedom and dignity that we have here in Britain. 